Hello, hello. So you're looking at a plot cut experiment, sort of. So this is the aluminium tape um, adhesive on the cutting mat and as well some adhesive on the double sided tape. Then I use this kind of plastic which has a really sharp edge, kind of massage it into the glue of the cutting mat. And the thing is, I'm trying to cut 0.7 millimeter traces, which is rather small. I didn't think it was capable of. And as you can see, uh, it did fuck up a few times. And this was the weight that was on this sled. And it's rather hefty, so I changed it over to three of these clamps. They are lighter. I could not find my skit. Oh, my scales here, by the way. Didn't know I left it in the in the shed. To be honest, it's really dirty. I'm not even sure if it's visible. <laughs> Let's see what this thing weighs. Is this all the glue that's coming from everywhere? I guess so. But it's uh, readable once more. So let me. Zero. I hope it's even capable of measuring this. Might not. 47.4 gram. Rather heavy. 25. Almost half. So I use half the cutting width weight I used before. And hopefully when uh, the drag knife turns in really like really small corners and such. It doesn't um, lift up the foil. It's lifting here. It's because I didn't use enough glue, I guess, on this part. And this glue reacts to heat quite heavily. So if it's warmer inside the shed, which is uh, fluctuating because it has no insulation at all, it might lift all of a sudden. So let's see. It's 0.7 millimeter trace and 0.6 millimeter in between which is really low I mean the printer could do 0.3 in between so this is double that I mean yeah. so etching is of course uh, far more nicer or at least more accurate and it got down to 0.5 I believe so 0.7 for a plot color is not that bad I think and I, I'm pretty sure there is much more to gain in how it works if, if you, you know, there's many things to try. I mean, this adhesive, for instance, it just lets go with the slightest heat, which is not cool. <clears throat> oh yeah, also, I, um, so the whole coil is made up out of two parts, so I can once more stick it down to the cutting mat in between. So I'll start with part one. Right there. Cutting speed is not that fast if you compare it to most commercial plotters. Uh, but then again, if I raise the speed, uh, it cuts corners, literally. Like it fucks up corners, so. So this is part one, then I tend to, you know, push this stuff a little bit on the cutting mat. Also the cut looks way sweeter than these. So this reducing weight helps. It's either reducing the weight or increase the speed. Increasing the speed is not an option at this moment, so I reduce the weight. But since I use ball bearing, linear bearings, there is a certain weight I have to overcome or the thing doesn't drop. Which completely screws everything up, so there is kind of a balance. Apparently it wants to drop with this weight on it. And uh, well, we'll see. But it, this looks 
kind of nice. It's only half the part, so the traces are much wider now. And now I'm gonna kind of cut them in two. So I load part two, and we'll see how it goes. Now question is, did it cut all the way through? So it didn't lift anywhere, which is the result I got since I changed the weight. I made five of them, no lifting. Well, with the heavier weight, three out of five failed. So this is the way to go, for sure. So I wonder how much smaller or thinner you can go even. I don't think much, but... So now the idea is... Get a knife or something sharp. I'll lift off the backing of the trays I want to keep. Not the stuff in between. Ooh. these little squares. Since I did it in two parts, I actually should make the knife cut a little bit where it starts, uh, you know, uh, so it, where it starts it should cut a little bit over. So since the knife can be positioned anywhere when it drops down, so it doesn't like complete the whole cut nicely because the knife offset. So actually I need to add a tiny or like a one millimeter of part one to part two. So it really, it cuts the one millimeter twice or a half the millimeter of that, but it will be a continuous cut. I didn't change that yet. Ooh. That was too aggressive. Can I fix it? I think I increased speed here and kind of did not cut all the way through at every stage. So this one is screwed up. I'm gonna remove that one. Should have stayed with the old speed that worked. But of course you want faster and you want more. Oh, that was easy. <clears throat> well, the nice thing about this method is I can dump on a piece of mylar on here at higher end, remove it and put another coil on the same mylar over here and position it the way I want. Since there will be failures. So, yeah, you can end up with a, a complete foil with only the ones that worked. So I'll first hire this one, I'll leave some space for a second one. I'm just gonna put it like here, on top of it, wrap some paper towel. And just Rub it in. I really like this method. And I should be able to kind of get it off. Nope, I want to zoom out.
So there's one foil on there. I need to clean it up still, but I'm gonna add another one. So let's, let's do this one. See, that one went perfectly fine. So now, I could position this foil next to it with some space. It has a acrylic backing, I believe, so it is pressure sensitive. It's easier to... Like, if you rub it in, it will stick better. Then I'll dump it on here. Now we are able to clean it up, hopefully. That should be one point. That's one. Why is this nice? Well, you could use any foil you like. Or anything you like, actually. So I could use this is a 12 micron uh, miler, but I could use anything. Yeah. Another advantage is that there's not glue everywhere. The only glue that's there is underneath the coil. I noticed my blue uh, uh, stuff I use for etching is uh, quite noisy, far more noisy than than this. And I'm not sure what it is. Maybe the acrylic damps it. That might be one thing. Another thing uh, might be that the aluminium from this roll is soft aluminium. And I think the other one might be annealed. So it's really like hardened. And it's more noisy. I don't know. Now what I like to do is kind of dump it, coil down
Here's some more coils, but it's 12 micron foil. And I used glue of my own. A downside of that is that you have to use glue on your mylar and you have to put it everywhere. It's not that thick layer. I mean, it's probably thinner and, and lighter than this glue. But at least this glue is not everywhere. So now I usually either use something like this, the sharp edge piece of plastic just work it once so with the sharp edge you don't have to you, you know like uh, pressure put a lot of pressure on it but since the uh, surface area of this edge is so small you put quite a lot of pressure on on the acrylic so it, it hires better. That's why they use often a roller as well, I think, because, uh, well, there's only a small part touching it. Uh, so there's quite a lot of pressure and it's easy to use, of course. But I don't have a good roller. I have a, I have a roller, but it's rather wide. I was saying my roller is rather wide. So all the pressure which is uh, on a bigger surface area to begin with, is also wider, so... Something like a sharp edge will like really put some pressure on here without too much effort. And if you don't be careful, you cut it. That's how it works. <laughs> so now I should be able to remove this because it's temporarily sticky. And I got two coils. And they probably measure around three point something. Beep. Beep it beep. It's not gonna be high. I mean 3.1 or something. 3.2. 3. 3.2. 3. But this is faster than etching. Etching can get a higher accuracy. This has other benefits. And it looks rather shiny. If you remove the glue that's still on there, it's even more shiny. Bling bling. <laughs> 